What's up everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Pursuit of Growth. And today in keeping with our 2020 overseeding series, part four, I'm gonna be giving you a two week update or progress report on that Jonathan Green Black Beauty dense shade mix seed that we put down approximately two weeks ago. I'll give you an update on that. I'll show you what I'm doing to fix some of the deficient or bare areas. And then at the end, we're gonna come back and talk about some weather considerations, as well as why you need to stay the course, regardless of what your lawn or seed is showing you. All that and more after the intro, this is The Pursuit of Growth. All right, so I appreciate you clicking on the video. And if this is your first time and you find out that you like the content, I invite you to click around, see if anything is interesting to you. I live in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. So if you're from that area or, you know, you just like the lawn care content that I'm putting out, I'd invite you to like, share, subscribe, do all the things that the cool YouTubers like to do. I could, I'd really appreciate it. And it really helps me out. So like I said, not too much talking here in the studio just yet. We're going to go take it back out to my parents' house. Again, this is the two week update. Uh, two weeks post seeding, and I'm going to show you what things look like. And then I'm going to show you how I addressed some areas that were kind of thin. And the weather played a big, big part in the slow and thin germination. Had some very goofy weather patterns uh, compared to last year when I did the overseeding project at my own house, but that's okay. We're going to stay the course. And I can tell you that things are looking much better. What I want you to remember is that this is two weeks post seeding. It's not two weeks from when I post this video. Uh, you know, it, from the time I record these videos to the time that I get them edited and put out, it may or may not exactly line up. So I just want you to remember when you're watching this, and I'll put it right down here, when this actually took place versus current time when you're seeing this video. And then, like I said at the end, we're going to come back here. I want to talk about those weather, weather considerations that we're facing this year and things that hopefully will motivate you if you're concerned about uh, the lack of germination or the thin germination you might be seeing in your own turf stand. And then I want to bring you up to current speed for the rest of these videos because we are coming to the end of this uh, mini series, if you would like to call it that. Yes, I still have my lawn. Yes, I'm still doing things to my lawn and we're going to get back to that, but we got to finish up this series first before we can get back to the updates on my lawn and what I'm doing to just continue good habits through this fall season. So that's enough from the studio. Let's take it to 18 days post seeding at my parents' house with the Jonathan Green Black Beauty Dense Shade Mix. So walking out over the main part of the stand, you can see that we do have some thin areas, uh, some areas that are extremely thin. And then I would say that the overall thinness of the lawn is pretty high. But again, like we'll talk about later on at the end of this video, uh, the weather patterns played a large part in that. The tenacity application that we made uh, is doing pretty well. You can see some clover that tried to infiltrate here. And you can see just how the whitening and the bleaching effect that's taking place some more clover over there. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how everything came in. Right around these edges here where I was trying to be extremely careful about uh, not getting any grass seed into the beds. It's thin, so we're gonna be addressing those thin spots today. But overall, like I said, I'm quite happy with how things turned out. You can see the seed mat that we put down on this hill is starting to sink further and further down underneath the growing turf grass. And as we continue to water, that'll sink more and more and continue to erode until there's pretty much nothing left. And at that point, we'll come out back and we'll pick up any areas that are uh, still floating. Like you see this right here is actually floating and there's grass underneath it. I learned from doing my seeding project at my house last year that if you leave this stuff go, eventually it will become a detriment to the plants, especially because of the shorter days, the cloudy conditions of fall. It'll get to a point where it's starting to do more harm than good. 
again against the wall. Now I came in here yesterday as a little trial run of what I'm going to do today. You can see how real close to the wall is quite bare. You can see that these few weeds, the tenacity is doing a good job of bleaching them out and we'll stay on top of that. But again, you can only focus on so many things. Right now the main focus is the grow in. You can see from yesterday where uh, that soil right there is kind of packed down and now where you come down here it's much more loose and that's because I put more seed in this area yesterday used a very specific and helpful tool to get to achieve good seed to soil contact and that's what we're gonna be doing now and the rest of these thin spots so again we're using the uh, Jonathan Green Black Beauty Dense Shade Mix this is as you saw in the previous videos I uh, we went through all of this the seed that we had purchased which is fine and then i got that bag right there as a supplement because i knew there would be some spots that will uh need to be uh rectified a little more seed uh, and that's a recommendation i would make to everyone is uh, have more seed on hand for the inevitable bare spots that where seeds just not going to take uh, one thing i noticed is i was a little bit reckless uh, maybe not reckless is the word I was a little bit uh, too aggressive with the blower when I was blowing the seed off the sidewalk and you can actually see that in the past video which reminds me if you haven't checked out any of this series or any of my other videos uh, so far on my parents project or any of the videos I've done and you're liking this content I would greatly appreciate a sub from you on YouTube as of this recording I'm at 48 subscribers and though that may not be a lot as far as YouTube goes, to me, I'd love to get to 50 and I'm grateful for every single one of you that subscribed. Tell your friends about it. If you live in the Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania region or anywhere, uh, we'd love to, to have you. But I noticed there was a strong lack of specific content for this region. So if you live in this region, you can follow right along with me. So as I said, we'll be that's a three pound bag of Black Beauty that I got for this project and I'll probably order one more three pound bag just to have it on hand. Um, probably won't have a chance to, this is the last day I, in my mind that it's possible to do this. Again, towards the end of the video, we're gonna talk about weather considerations and staying the course uh, when we get into the fall. I picked up one of these automatic Scots Whizzers. Uh, they're great. Uh, I never used one before yesterday, but I've seen a lot of people use them and uh, They're just really convenient. Honestly, you can use them for putting out salt if you're in a northern climate There's just a lot of easy convenient uses and the nice thing about it being a battery powered unit is You don't have to worry about maintaining a consistent hand cranking speed like, like you do with the cheaper models where you're it's man powered this is battery powered so it's staying consistent for you as far as your seed that you're distributing. All you have to worry about is uh, directing its flow to the appropriate areas. So after we put that seed down with the Scott's Whiz, we're gonna go and we're gonna use this little guy right here. I always, I remember as a young kid, I would always be like, what the heck is this thing for? This tool is just indispensable for this type of work and I'll show you why. So I got, I got the, the whiz, I got filled up a good bit with seed. And I've got, well, let me, I don't have it. Let me flip this, flip the edge guard on so we don't get seed in our mulch bed. And we're gonna distribute just a little bit more seed. You can see up there that there is uh, some turf grass growing up there, but I want it to be a little bit thicker. put a nice little layer of seed over that area and I'll probably sprinkle some by hand right along the edge to try to get it real nice and close. After we lay the seed down and we're gonna very lightly run this wheel here. Let me show you. In the, we're gonna run this wheel over that seed just to achieve good seed to soil contact. Push that seed a little deeper into the soil level and just let the weight of this tool do the work for you. I'm not putting any downward pressure down on anything. Just letting the weight of the tool do the work.
and now you can see the difference between where we haven't used the tool and haven't reseeded to here where the soil is fresh and turned over with the seed intermixed. Now I hear what you're saying, like, geez, that looks mighty aggressive in an area where you just planted some, you got some two week old grass sitting. Well, look, after going through, this is all brand new grass. The real tall stuff is the rye grass because that shoots up first. And look, it's still there, it's still fine. It might be laying over a little bit, but if you keep up with the watering and feeding accordingly, it'll be strong and it'll bounce right back. to go this route when you're addressing your bare spots after a growing it's going to look aggressive and you're going to be fearful doing it because you're going to be afraid that you're going to tear out all your new baby grass but i can sh assure you that the grass that was growing and in here is still in here and is doing just fine and will repair fine there won't be any issues at all as long as you let the weight of that tool do the work and you don't get too crazy with it. You can see a section right here I just did the same thing to. Plenty of grass that has already grown in in there. And you see this right here? That's not a problem because look, this grass still has a nice bit of soil around it. So as it continues to grow, those roots are just gonna go right on through to the other side of the loose soil and you won't have a problem, I assure you, as long as you're not too, too aggressive with it. So now that this side of the sidewalk is complete, we're gonna go ahead and do the other side and flow right into this next bare edge area. And then we'll come back through with the weasel and get that good seed to soil contact. And so it just continues on like that in all the deficient areas until you've got good, co better coverage to make up for the areas where you're lacking in some growth. I think once we really start pushing the nitrogen to this in another week or so, it'll fill in nicely. As you can see, I don't know if it will come in close. You can see I still have a little bit of seed that I need to uh, rake in with the weasel and you can see all the the dark areas are the largest spots where i needed to fill in with some seed so that's where we're at like i said as of today we're like 18 days post seeding and uh things are looking pretty good admittedly they feel a little thin to me for being two and a half weeks in but the temperatures have been kind of screwy so as we come out to the 
the street level here put more on the edges of the street and just uh, can we'll continue to uh, do all the things we need to do all the cultural practices to get this to grow in another concern of mine is this hillside it looks a little thin with that with that blanket I'm kind of concerned see if we pull away some of the blanket it's a lot a decent bit of bare soil under there so we're really gonna have to push hard with nitrogen as soon as we can so the last thing I wanted to talk about is some weather considerations and some things that I've seen people in my area and across the country uh, as it pertains to their fall projects and what they're seeing or not seeing. So I think we'll take it back to the studio for this little end of the video and the discussion we're going to have. So we'll give you updates in a little bit as this continues to grow in and we'll see you on the next one. All right, so there you have it. If you made it this far into the video, you must like what you're seeing. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Remember to hit the, the notification bell so you know when I post a video here on the pursuit of growth. So to recap, you saw what we did leading up to our seeding on September 7th, Labor Day. That's when we put the initial seeding down of the Jonathan Green Dense Shade Mix. Then 18 days later, the video that you just watched is when we came back on September 25th and put down more seed with and use the weasel to rake it in. Now, today, as I'm recording this, October 13th. So from the initial seeding until today, it's been five weeks since we initially put the seed down. And then from the reseeding at the 18 day interval to today, it's been another two and a half weeks. So in total, from when we initially seeded to today is five weeks. And from the video, the project you just saw to today is two and a half weeks. Why is that important? Because I am just as impatient as anybody else. I want to see quick results, but I have to remind myself that this dense shade mix has a fair amount of Kentucky bluegrass in it. And what does that mean? Well, Kentucky bluegrass, it's a beautiful cultivar of turf. It, it, it looks great, but if you're kind of, you tend to be impatient like me and want like that quicker germination and, and thickening up, especially when the weather's been so volatile like we've experienced here, you got to remember that that bluegrass is going to take up to 21 days to even germinate. And that's where I want to get to managing expectations and just staying the course. Look, last year when I did my renovation at my lawn, it was in, in September through October, it was still in the 90s and high 80s. The day after the initial seeding back on Labor Day, the next day it was 93 degrees and we wouldn't see another 90 degree temperature from then until today. But it has been very cool very quickly here. You couple that, the un, a little unseasonably mild temperatures that we've experienced in the Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania area, and as I'm sure most of the Mid-Atlantic has, coupled with the smoke cover that, yes, has come all the way across the country from California and the West Coast, we had, right when we put down our seed those first two weeks, we had a lot of haze in the sky, and it blocked out those rays of sunlight, which are going to do two things. That's going to help keep the soil warm, which is going to cause quicker germination, and it's also going to be better for the plants once they get out. So we were experiencing that, and that the the temperature coupled with that haze cover from the wildfire smoke really slowed things down. And I saw all across the country, but specifically in my area, so many people had done seedings and then were saying, "Oh my goodness, I'm two weeks in, I'm three weeks in, I'm a week in." and I'm not seeing the germination that I'm used to. That's due to mostly the weather. We can never control the weather. Only the Lord controls the weather. And I just want to encourage you that even if we do have either unseasonably cool, like we had in my area this uh, fall season so far, or unseasonably hot, there's nothing you can do about that. All we can do is manage to the best of our abilities. So if you happen to experience an unseasonably hot climate like we did last year, you're going to get that quick germination because it's so warm, but you better be on top of your watering because when that grass comes out, if you're not on top of it, those baby grasses are not going to survive high temperatures. 
And in the opposite fashion, if you have a very mild fall where your daytime highs are in the 70s, if you're lucky, and your soil temperatures plunge. When I did this seeding, our soil temperatures plunged down into almost 60. Now, cool season turf will absolutely germinate in those conditions, but it's not ideal to me. So what I want to remind you of once more is that if you put in the work, if you did the right things, if you managed your soil properly and did everything you could to get good seed to soil contact, you put in the work and it will germinate. Speaking from experience now, looking back, now that we're five weeks post seeding, initial seeding, it is filled in remarkably. The last thing I want to remind you of is get that mow in when it's appropriate, because once you start mowing the grass, that's when it's going to thicken up. I will say, spoiler alert, I have mowed it once with a Greenworks real mower, and immediately the next day, my dad called me on the phone and said, wow, I don't know what happened, but you cut the grass yesterday, and now all of a sudden, there's more coming up. That's because the grass needs to be told to thicken up. It's gonna go straight up, and then once you cut that off, try to keep it within the one-third rule, then it's gonna to start to laterally spread. It says, oh, I can't go up anymore. Let's start to spread out. And with anything that has a bluegrass in it, that's when it's really gonna to start to thicken up. To wrap it all up for this video, the seed's down, it's thicker, we've got a cut on it, it's been fertilized with some 901 green start. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't seen any of the uh, parents' lawn renovation project up to this point, I welcome you to click these videos that are gonna come up that'll direct you to the other parts of the series that you may have missed. And we'll see you next time on The Pursuit of Growth. Thanks so much, guys.